One of the most catastrophically disappointing aircraft developed for the Third Reich during World War II was the Messerschmitt Me 210. This heavy fighter seemed to have it all, a unique aerodynamic design, two powerful Daimler-Benz DB601 fuel injection engines, a revolutionary landing gear system, and more than enough firepower to give it the advantage over almost any other aircraft of its type. It was to be Germany's next great Zerstörer, or destroyer. The Me 210 was so impressive on paper that Nazi Germany ordered a thousand units before there was even a prototype. However, when the first units came out of the factory, the numerous flaws, shortcomings, and engineering oversights soon made it the most unpopular fighter among pilots. Not only that, but the backlash was so significant that Willy Messerschmitt, the founder of Messerschmitt AG, was almost forced to resign while his company faced dissolution. Eventually, the aircraft had to be taken apart and recommissioned as different units to recover some of the resources pledged to the failed project. The ME-210s that did reach the front lines were scattered to the furthest reaches of the conflict, where their poor performance left them considered one of the worst twin-engined aircraft to ever be built for the Luftwaffe. A hasty development. The idea behind the Messerschmitt ME-210 was to build a suitable replacement for the Messerschmitt BF-110, even though that aircraft had not even entered service yet. The choice was made to continue improving the outstanding performance of the BF-110 prototypes and stay ahead of Allied efforts in aircraft innovation. But the rest decision would prove to be one of the Third Reich's gravest mistakes in aircraft development. The ME-210 schematics were an ambitious departure from the BF-110's original design. Messerschmitt's engineers made the bold decision to drastically reduce the fighter's nose and place it much closer to the aircraft's center of gravity. This element gave the ME-210 its unique appearance. The ME-210 was also fitted with an internal bomb bay under the cockpit, something rarely seen on a fighter-type aircraft at the time. In addition, its bomb bay was capable of holding a payload of over 1,100 pounds. Its wing design was also a complete overhaul over its predecessors. The new wings were developed to work in conjunction with the brand new Daimler-Benz DB601 fuel injection engines to reach cruising speeds of up to 390 miles per hour. The improvement meant that the heavy aircraft was to be as fast as a light fighter while carrying many times more firepower. Another ambitious addition to the ME-210 was the inclusion of dive brakes on the upper section of the wings and a set of Stuvi 5B dive bombing sights fitted in the nose. These attachments allowed the aircraft to perform daring dive bombings and other audacious maneuvers. The weapon systems were also intended to be cutting edge. The aircraft was armed at the front with four 20mm cannons. In the back, the ME-210 was equipped with a state-of-the-art electric gun aiming system. Named the FDSL-131 Remote Gun Turret, this defensive setup was operated via remote control from the rear of the cockpit by the aircraft's gunner. The rear section of the cockpit had its viewing panels modified with a bulging convex configuration to grant the gunner an almost 190-degree angle view of the aircraft's rear. Coupled with an enhanced field of vision, the FDSL-131 remote guns were fitted to allow a significantly high range of movement, which translated into a defense system capable of firing in any rear-bound direction. Additionally, the remote turrets were electrically triggered. As a safety measure, the electrical contact breaker acted as an interrupter preventing the gunner from damaging the aircraft's horizontal stabilizer. All these design features gave the Nazi High Command the impression that they had a juggernaut on their hands. And before the prototype could be tested, Hitler ordered a fleet of 1,000 ME-210s. A disappointing performance. When the first prototype debuted in September of 1939, expectations among the Luftwaffe commanders were sky high. Unfortunately, the aircraft's flaws had become more than apparent from the very first test flight. The aircraft demonstrated poor maneuverability when turning and suffered constant oscillation even while flying on a flat plane. The first test pilots to fly them deemed the ME-210s hazardous and unsafe for battle. One of the pilots even said that the ME-210 had, quote, all the least desirable attributes an aeroplane could possess. Messerschmitt engineers then replaced the twin rudder setup inherited from the 110 with an advanced single vertical stabilizer to fix the stabilization issue. 
they named the second iteration the ME 210 V2. Still, this change turned out useless as the aircraft's shaky performance continued. The ambitious design of the nose and wings also produced its own set of issues. When the aircraft reached certain angles, the airflow between the wings would separate. This effect caused a sharp decrease in the lift, also known in aviation as a stall. In turn, these stalls often led the ME 210 into a spin where the pilot would lose control of the fighter as it plunged downward in a swirling motion. That is precisely how the Luftwaffe lost the ME 210 V2 in September of 1940. Its test pilot couldn't recover from an erratic spin caused by the aircraft's constant stalling and was forced to eject from the ME 210 V2 just before it crashed and burned to cinders. Expectedly, the weapon systems were not free from defects either. For all the claims of electric triggering, full range of motion, and safety measures, the hype behind the FDSL-131 remote gun turrets turned out to be completely unmerited. The gunners would find it impossible to hit their targets, as the electric firing mechanism wasn't precise enough. Not only that, some gunners reported the turrets not firing at all. The unreliability convinced many aviators to simply not use the turret system, as they considered it a risk that wasn't worth the price. The issues the ME-210 presented were so numerous and complex that it took Messerschmitt 16 different prototypes and over 90 individual units to come up with a more stable version of the aircraft. However, the redesigns didn't mean the ME-210's performance was in any way desirable. Far from it, the heavy fighters still showcased many stability issues on top of the problems its weapon systems continued to have. That's when a second disastrous decision by the German Ministry of Aviation, or RLM, came into play. Turning a blind eye to all the shortcomings during the testing phase, the RLM cleared the ME-210 to go into full production in 1941. The main reason behind this seemingly preposterous decision was the overwhelming eagerness the Luftwaffe had for replacing the BF-110. While the BF-110 saw early success in the war, the ever-evolving Allied aircraft developments were quickly outclassing it. The repercussions were immediate. Once in the sky, the ME-210 showed how dire its handling really was and forced RLM to recall the units. The airframe had to be redesigned and the rear section of the fuselage elongated. The ensuing aircraft came to be known as the ME-210C, which was the version finally deployed into service. A Brief Career The ME-210C arrived at the war's front lines by April of 1942 and instantly became a peculiarly unpopular aircraft among fighter pilots, with many of them continuing to forego the use of the rear-mounted turrets. In May of the same year, the production of the heavy fighter was halted. The RLM decided to reassume the production of the BF-110, but upgraded with the ME-210's DB-601 engines. Only 90 ME-210Cs left the production line, and over 300 airframes were stashed away in a storage facility. By September, the move to shelve the model seemed to prove the correct one, as the ME-210 had its first encounter with the British Royal Air Force, ending in a predictable result. A pair of ME-210s attempting a raid over Britain from across the North Sea encountered two Hawker Typhoons dispatched from an airbase near Newcastle. The ME-210's weak defenses and risky handling were evident, as the Typhoon reported that the German aircraft chose to drop their bombs early and attempt to flee rather than engage. Both ME-210s were shot down with ease. Most of the remaining frontline ME-210s were moved to Italy and North Africa, where the Allies were yet to enjoy total air superiority. Several ME-210 sorties to strafe light or undefended trucks and cargo ships were successful. And in desperation, the ME-210 also served as a fighter escort to Junkers Ju-52 3M transport formations, trying to keep German lines resupplied in the face of increasing Allied pressure in the region. However, it wouldn't be long before maintenance issues and improved Allied air coverage kept the ME-210 effectively grounded. In total, the 90 units in service, plus another 108 built by Hungary as a commission, would be the only ME-210s to fly. The model was ultimately abandoned and replaced by a new aircraft, the ME-410. A blunder. The ME-210's atrocious development and performance not only frustrated RLM and the Luftwaffe, but also became a significant blunder in the Messerschmitt Corporation's history. The ME-210 was a public embarrassment for Nazi Germany, and Messerschmitt's reputation suffered significantly. 
The badgering to account for their mistakes almost forced the dissolution of the company, and its owner and founder, Wilhelm Emil Willy Messerschmitt, was pressured to resign. However, what saved the Messerschmitt Corporation from utter failure was an urgent and complete overhaul of the ME-210. The resulting aircraft was named ME-410. With its outstanding performance, it finally became the long-awaited replacement for the BF-110. The Messerschmitt ME-210 may have been an ambitious project that had the potential to be one of the most formidable and versatile fighters in World War II. Still, a rushed development, poor design decisions, and an urge to have it all doomed the project to be forever remembered as one of the biggest disasters in aircraft design history. Thank you for watching our video. Where do you think it all went wrong with the ME-210? Could the program have been salvaged? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future content.